Hey life designers, what's up? Welcome to Intentional Tuesdays, where this week we're going to be talking about questions and how the questions that we ask ourselves, how those questions might actually be limiting our potential and our growth and development. Now, you probably didn't realize that you are asking yourself questions, but we are. We all do this, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, we have questions that are running on our brains. Let me show you what I mean. So step one is to find an area of your life that you would like to change. Now, the more specific, the better. So do the best that you can on that front. But it could be anything across any area of your life. So for example, perhaps you want to lose 20 pounds or perhaps you want to quit your job find a new job that makes you feel more alive and more fulfilled or perhaps you want to discover the love of your life and and find yourself in a long-term romantic relationship these are the types of projects that you want to identify something that matters to you something that is easily understood so that's step one Now step two is to identify a single action that you could do that would advance your cause toward the project that you just identified. Now I realize you don't necessarily know exactly what you need to do in order to, to make the changes that you're thinking about. That's okay. My experience is that even if we don't know exactly the answer, we oftentimes know something that we could do that would probably be beneficial. <laughs> At a minimum, it would be beneficial from a learning experience. So most of us, even though we may not have all the answers, we have an idea of something that we could be doing. We're just not doing it. So I would like you to identify one of those things, one action that you could take that would potentially advance your cause toward the goal that you just identified. That's step two. So continuing the example that I gave earlier, my step two, suppose my step one was, let's go with the, I want to lose 20 pounds. My step two would be, I could get myself on a regular workout routine where I'm going to the gym four days a week. That's an action that I could take to help me lose 20 pounds. Now step three, probably will be a little bit easier for you. I would like you to identify three objections that you have to taking the action that you just described. Most likely you have a lot of them. <laughs> I'm going to limit you to just three. So three objections. So in my case, uh, going to the gym four days a week, one of my objections might be, you know, I I've tried this before. I've tried getting on a workout routine. It never lasts for me. I always quit and then I feel worse off than I did before I started. Another objection might be, I don't have time. I have no time to work out four hours a week. It's impossible. And my third objection might be as simple as, well, I, I hate going to the gym. So these are my three objections as to why I'm not going to start working out four days a week. Now step four is a little bit trickier, a little bit more subtle, requires a bit more thought. What I want you to do is I want you to identify the questions that are really underpinning your objections. So imagine I am trying to convince you to do the thing that you identify, the thing that you object to. I'm trying to convince you to do it. You're trying to make your case, make your argument against me. So you are peppering me with questions and if I can't answer those questions to your satisfaction you don't have to do the thing so what are those questions that you would throw at me in order to make your argument that's what we're looking for so for example in my case I would say why would I possibly think that this will be the one time that my workout program sticks of all the other times I've tried it, it fails within two weeks. Why is this going to be the time that it actually works? Or I might say, look, I am incredibly busy. Why do I think that I could possibly add four more hours to my schedule? There's not enough hours in the day. How do you create an extra hour in a day that's already full? 
Or I might say, why would I possibly subject myself to four hours a week of an activity that I don't even like? Why would I do that? So I hope you can feel how these types of questions are really limiting my options. I call these disempowering questions because they really, what they do is they preclude any option that you might come up with. They basically say, don't do anything. Don't try to solve this particular problem. What's interesting about the disempowering questions is they're impossible to answer. There is quite literally no answer. That's the power of those particular types of questions. We frame them in a way such that they cannot be answered. And what this does psychologically is it gives us a ton of freedom to do nothing. <laughs> it relieves us of all obligation to do the hard work that life design requires. There's an impossible question standing between you and a positive change, then you're off the hook. You don't have to do it. So that's why these disempowering questions are so powerful and so important to deal with. Which brings us to step five, where our goal here is to replace those disempowering questions with empowering questions, questions that actually, rather than restricting your options, open up more space and create more opportunity and more possibility. You'll notice that empowering questions oftentimes will challenge the assumptions that are being held by all of your objections and all of your concerns about doing the thing that you think might be beneficial. There's a lot of assumptions baked in there. Your empowering questions will often turn those assumptions around and, and really start to question them. Are they real? Ideally, your empowering questions, which is what we're talking about here, your empowering questions are not only going to open up the door to possible next steps, they're actually going to point the way. So a, a really powerful, uh, a really well-designed, empowering question will actually point to the next step that you're going to take. So keep that in mind as you try to come up with some empowering questions. So again, back to my example, a, an empowering question to deal with the, the whole uh, falling off the plan and not being able to stick to the workout plan, an empowering question might be, how can I design a plan that is modest enough that I can guarantee myself to be able to stick with it for a minimum of three months? That's an empowering question. With regards to the question of time and not having enough time, an empowering question might be, what activities can I reduce in my life or perhaps even eliminate altogether so that I might free up three hours a week to dedicate to this new project of exercising on a regular basis. And it, with regards to the notion of I don't like to work out, I don't like to do exercise at the gym, an empowering question might be, what are some physical activities that I actually enjoy doing just for the sake of doing them? That's an empowering question that opens up a door to a whole bunch of new possibilities. So why do we focus on questions? Why not just focus directly on the activity that we know might bring a positive change into our lives? The answer is because the questions are there. They are like a gatekeeper to your brain and to your motivation. And until those questions are answered in a way that is satisfactory to you, then you're not going to take action. So it's really important that we identify those questions and then we replace them with different questions. So that's it for this week's Intentional Tuesdays. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get a lot out of it. Definitely give this a try at home. There's a downloadable worksheet as part of the write-up that you can grab and that will give you a blank form that you can use to enter your own exploration of the exercise that we just walked through and it also gives you some more examples that might be helpful for you to just kind of get your mind around what we're up to here with each of the five steps so go ahead and grab that downloadable worksheet i think you'll find it useful with that i wish you all the best and as always i appreciate your time and your attention and until our paths cross again i wish you a prosperous journey take care